President. Now, before we pass any law in this place, we should ask ourselves this pretty basic question. I'm sure my colleagues on the coalition side would be pleased to hear me put this proposition forward. What's the problem we are trying to solve? Uh, let's not waste the parliament's time and uh, let's not uh, pass uh, more legislation, which is what's being proposed here, uh, if we're not solving a serious problem. Now, I don't remember being bombarded with lots of correspondence about the need to get rid of 18C from the Racial Discrimination Act. I don't recall over the past 20 years protests in the street because people feel that their freedom of speech is being impinged upon. I don't remember seeing protests about this specific issue. No, because most people understand that it's not appropriate to hurl racist insults at people and that if they do that, there are consequences. No, the only clamour for a change to this law is coming straight out of Holt Street, straight out of News Limited, whose version of free speech is anything I say is OK and will be the arbiters of what's right and wrong in this area, and of course their poster child, that right-wing wacko Andrew Bolt. That's where the clamour is coming from to change these laws. Um, we need to understand what these laws actually do. Uh, I listened to an esteemed presenter on the ABC this morning implying that people who express an opinion, no matter how bigoted, should be sent to jail. Well, they're not under these laws. It is not a criminal offence. And I think people don't understand how this thing actually works. Uh, if you use racist, hateful language that has an impact on another individual, they have the right to seek mediation. That's a good thing. And most of these cases are settled through mediation. Someone learns a valuable lesson about the impact of hate speech on other people. Occasionally, as in the Bolt case, it can end up in court. And what does the court do in those situations? They might order an apology. Well, that's what happened in the Bolt case. He was issued with a court-ordered notice for an apology and he was forced to retract his article and not to publish it elsewhere. That's a small price to pay when you consider the impact of this behaviour on other people. Of course all of us in this place support freedom of speech, but what about the freedom of a young Muslim woman uh, on a tram? being free to travel without having people hurl racist insults at her? What about the right of an Aboriginal man to be served at a venue without having racist insults hurled at them? What about the freedom of a young Asian boy in the classroom being able to get about their business without being the subject of racist taunts? That's what this legislation is about. Nothing more, nothing less. Senator Brandis ta talks about the chill effect, as though there are teams of writers and lawyers poring over work that can't be published because, God forbid, there might be something in there that is racist towards others. He says that without being able to cite any evidence for that occurring. If these laws give a journalist pause to think that the impact of what they're writing may in fact cause harm on others, well, that is a good thing. And if they're forced to apologise because they do cause harm to others, that's a good thing. Far from being a chilling uh, effect, these, uh, this uh, action by this government will have a heating effect it will flush out the racists and the bigots and give them, in the Prime Minister's words, the green light to use their hate speech against others. Well, there's been a lot of talk about green lights and amber lights and red lights, but this government is putting this sign up in flashing lights. Racists and bigots, you are welcome in Australia. Well, you're not. These laws exist because we as a government have a role in protecting people from that hateful speech.